Hello my friends, Jacob is here once again. Thanks for pressing play for spending some time with me. I'm so glad you're here. We're, this is not my favorite topic, but it's an interesting one. It's a very interesting one because it affects everybody in the whole world, right? And it's a big thing, you know, in the whole thing on the internet, everybody all scared about that new world order, that one world religion, all that stuff. You know, the Antichrist and all that. Oh, listen, you're going to have a good deal of peace by the end of the show. We're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about some things that are going on with uh, the Pope. Today's an anniversary. It's an anniversary. A historic anniversary for the human fraternity. That's right. Yeah, fraternity. It's a deal that they, uh, you know, it's working with the uh, the Arab world and the the uh, and Muslims and Catholics and Christians and everybody coming together as one. Which is, you know, we're gonna get into it, right? A fraternity, human fraternity. It's uh, he uh, he got an award for this, Pope Francis, and it's the first anniversary. T -t Today's like the first anniversary of signing this deal. By the way. I don't know if you ever went to like a university or a college or anything else. They have these things. They're called fraternities. That's where a lot of secret societies are coming from. I'm just saying. I'm not saying that's what this is about, but the show is going to blow your mind. Buckle up, people. Okay, Pope Francis, he's gotten a lot of flack. I've done a couple of videos. Every time I do a video, I get the big... No monetized on this one, pal. That's what they say. I don't know why. It, it's, it is what it is. I guess it's a touchy subject, you know? Not as touchy as some of the priests. Dum, dum, That's terrible. Oh, God. What's going on? I need to, uh... I need to just, I need to just barrel through this. It's, uh... I always find myself talking about this subject, and I don't want to talk about it. But it's something that needs to be discussed. Because it's like world news, right? The whole world is connected to all of this that's going on. See, religion's going through like a rebranding phase. I've talked about this before, uh, you know, especially with all the celebrities going to become Christians and you see, you know, the evangelical leaders coming together with, you know, the Vatican and the Vatican reaching out to all of these other leaders. And you see that it's like there's this new, there's this new order to things that's taken place. Some say it's a good thing. You gotta tell me in the comments section. I'm just telling you what they say. read this to you. Uh, the Pope celebrated the first anniversary of the signing of the document on the human fraternity for world peace and living together. I mean, it sounds great. I mean, was, that's that's kind of the, uh, the, the golden rules to love others as you love yourself, right? So, I mean, it sounds good, but really, is it though? <laughs> I mean, are these organizations really good for spiritual growth or is it more really about control and power? And if they're coming together in this human fraternity, is it really more like, you know, what a fraternity turns out to be? Let me read the uh, definition of fraternity for you. It is a uh, from the Latin frater, which means brotherhood, okay? A fraternal organization is an organization, society, club, or fraternal order traditionally of men associated together with various religious or secular aims. They're coming together, everybody has different ideas, but they have a single goal. They have these, these goals that they want to guide people spiritually, guide people, you know, in the secular world, morally, whatever, right? Popes come in, he's making a lot of waves. There are a lot of people that have a lot of problems. There's like a little civil war going on in there. Some, some of these uh, high-ranking cardinals and archbishops, they, they say some pretty terrible things about him. I mean, look, even his, uh, his buddy who's that, that Italian writer, Eugenio Scalfari. I've done some shows about him where he's, you know, he's published this work about the Pope and how the Pope, you know, he doesn't believe in the resurrection of Christ. I don't know if that's true. Of course, they, they denied it. I 
last video that I did that actually went viral because uh, you know, it seems that just stays at a certain number. But you know, when, when things are meant to get out there, they get out there. So help me out by sharing, will you? So I did this video just kind of at the back alley where, where I was working about how the Pope changed the Lord's Prayer. He got rid of the whole thing about, you know, lead us not into temptation because he said that God would never lead us into temptation. The Pope said that, the head of the, you know, who would know the scriptures, right? You would think, well, Jesus was led by the Spirit of God. He to, to, to be tempted. So God does lead you to be tempted if there's a reason. And it just means that we're tried, we're, we're uh, you know, we're tested. We're tested to be made pure, like the hard times that we go through. This is a good thing. Temptation, trials, these things, you know, they're there to kind of get us to think better, to stop acting like an animal, to stop following our basis instincts, you know? No more fight or flight, but really patience and love and compassion and peace and joy. Which is what, you know, Pope says that he's, he's, uh, he's trying to bring together with this, this deal that they came up with. He actually, um, this is the, he, he released a video message where he said he greets everyone present and especially the people in humanity who help the poor, sick, persecuted, weak brothers, sisters. And he I said a year ago, my brother, the Grand Imam Al Azhar, Dr. Ahmad Al Tabid, I, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, forgive me. And I signed a document on human fraternity in the capital of the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, uh, Abu Dhabi. Today. Uh, we celebrate the first anniversary of this great humanitarian event as we hope for a better future for humanity, a future free from hatred, rancor, extremism, terrorism, in which the values of peace, love, and fraternity prevail. That's, I mean, that's, that sounds really wonderful. He's trying to advance the human condition, the human cause. That's what he, uh, he wrote. Instead of like, you know, advancing the kingdom of God, which is a big deal because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy, and power, and the holy truth, and the Holy Spirit, and God. And if you're not advancing righteousness, peace, and joy, the kingdom of God, are you, what are you advancing, really? You're, you're advancing this beast system, this world system. And look, it's, it's a good thing to get along with other people, and it's, I mean, these are important things to love, to accept, to embrace. And I'm not one to, uh, I'm not one to say, your religion's bad, your religion's bad, your religion's bad. But I do see that this is like, this is the system. Like, if you don't think that this one world order, this new world order, this one world religion that every time, you don't, if you don't think that it's already here, I got news for you. It is here. So it's been going on for a long time. It's got a new face, right? But it's the same old, same old boss, same old. Both been doing some, you know, some interesting things. One thing that I do agree with, and I know a lot of you may have a problem with this, is the fact that he says it's okay for priests to marry. I think that's that's actually biblically sound, just so you know. The, the scriptures actually say that you, you're not supposed to say to anybody, you can't eat this, you can't eat that, you can't get married. It's like written there in Timothy. It's like you, you shouldn't tell anybody that they can't marry. It's right there in scripture, and yet you have these organizations that do it. Well, the reason they did it really was for money. That's, uh, that's the real reason if you actually research it. It's, you know, so then when the person dies, that money continues to stay in the church. So basically these are you know, slaves of the system that make uh, twice more slaves in the world. That's what Jesus said to the uh, Pharisees of the day. make them twice more the son of hell that you are just that's what's going on so i mean look you have this world system and it's uh, it's in place but you know what it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things because th the story goes it's gonna have to happen these things are gonna have to happen and in the meantime while it's happening people are gonna start to you know, they're gonna to start to come to an understanding that maybe there's more, that maybe the hardship that they're in, that maybe there's a bigger answer, a bigger picture. Something that, like the world, when, when hardship comes, the world's not gonna be able to always bail you out. So people are going to turn to the only thing that matters, which is a relationship with God, the creator of all, the living God. So many people are so worried about so, so many things. And um, I actually shared a story today in the tweet. If you, if you uh, follow me on Twitter, that'll be awesome. 
Um, I, I, I send little thoughts out here and it's a good way to get reminded that I have a show going. But I, I met this wonderful lady at work. She was so stressed out, so worried about everything. Her name was Dory. I just worried about everything. She had just so much fear and I just see the fear in her. Um, scared of things that aren't even, you know, and I tried to explain to her that these things, they're, it's, it's not that they're irrational fears. It's, um, it's just that she's been programmed and conditioned to think a certain way, to always think that bad things are gonna happen. And how many of you out there think to yourself that always me, this always happens. You know, and if anybody tells you that things can get better, you want to prove to them you're wrong. And let me tell you why you're wrong, because I have this condition, I have that condition, and I had this happen, and I had that happen. And no, my life cannot get better. And they don't realize that this, this world, this world system keeps you in that mindset. To be free, to be truly free, is to understand the great I am. I am that I am. I will be whatever I will be. That's God's name. And God works in mysterious and wonderful ways. And I have great faith that when I'm talking to somebody that I know needs the love of God, needs to hear the truth of God, I don't say come to my church because I don't have one. Okay? I don't say you got to believe this or you got to believe this and you'll be free. No. You know what I do? I love on that person. And I allow God to, you know, to, to work through me if, if at all possible. So I, I told Dory, I said, I was, I had Chinese, um, I have, I, you know, I'm me with the fortune cookies, right? So I get, there's this great Chinese place near my work, beautiful family, you know, their kids work there and it's wonderful. And they make the best cheese, uh, crab rangoons, the, uh, the cheese, oh God, they're so good. I only treat myself every couple of weeks, but they always give me a bunch of fortune cookies because I just, I did them. And when I go through them and I see them and I go on out and I put that and I have a little jar at my work with like probably maybe a couple hundred of these things from over the years. And sometimes I like to just in faith, I grab it and I shake it up and I say, Dory, you know, this is what you need to know. Go ahead, put your hand in there and grab yourself a fortune. And she goes, I don't want to play your game. I said, play the game, Dory. Play the game. You never know. Maybe something good will come out of it. You don't know what's in there. She goes, I don't want your fortune cookie. I said, take it, Dory. Take it. She took it. All this worry, all this fear. And you know what it said? <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about how God works. Some people say, oh, God can't talk to anybody through a fortune cookie, right? The God can't talk to somebody through, uh, you know, I mean, come on, people. God speaks all the time. All you got to do is listen. You know, it said, it said you cannot control the wind, right? But you can adjust your sails. You can't control the wind, but you can adjust your sails. Jesus uh, talked about this. Uh, the kingdom of heaven comes. You don't know how it comes, right? It's like the wind. It comes and it goes. You don't know where it came from. You don't know where it's going. But what you can do is you can grab hold of that wind. You can grab hold of that truth because scripture says it's a great, the wind is, uh, you know, it's doctrine. And that people right now, they're being tossed back and forth by every wind of doctrine. So many different things, right? But one organization, one fraternity, one brotherhood, controlling them all. You know, corporations, how they work, right? There's one big umbrella company and it owns, you know, even, you could even have like two places that are, you know, like you could have a target and you could have like a something else, right? But these, somebody, they may even be at odds with each other. You can have like a Models and an Express. You can have like a Coles and a this, but there's an umbrella company. They all appear to be different but they're all ruled by the same guy. This is the world that we're in. But guess what? The good news is there's a way out. Why don't you allow these winds that come at you, these hard times that come at you, why don't you allow them to motivate you and to propel you faster into that promise that's waiting? All you gotta do is ask for it. Ask for the truth no matter what the cost. Now listen, I'm not saying that the Pope is the Antichrist or anything else because I know that the Antichrist spirit is all over. You got people watching right now don't even know it. They're in the Antichrist spirit. That Antichrist sits in the temple of God, points to your temples, right? Right? That's, you are the temple of God. I've talked about this on the show. Sits in the temple, declares himself to be God. It's that negative voice in your head saying, listen to me. Saying, I am the one that rules you. Next time that you're in an argument, you get a bunch of nonsense thinking, that's the Antichrist spirit. Say, uh-uh, pal. That's not my reality. I'm going to dwell in peace and righteousness and joy. I'm going to dwell in the kingdom of God. And I hope each and every one of you do as well. I love you all. Please do, do me a favor. Subscribe, share it around, tell your friends, and have the best day ever. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Jacob Israel. Please hit that like button.
leave a comment, subscribe, and share this channel around. If these shows have helped you, help Jacob to reach more any way you can and have the best day ever.